welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we are going to be building this little red panda habitat. Now this is essentially like a wicker basket dome thing we have going on here. Um, so essentially just a quick sort of aerial tour is the guests have to kind of walk through it to get to the rest of the zoo. So they have to kind of uh, get through this dome before they want to like come from the station to see the rest of like the animals. As you can hear the station being very loud in the back there. Anyway, I'm really excited to show you this one too because this was such, I was trying to keep things different and trying to mix things up and I think I did that pretty successfully with this one. So I hope you like the video. There's going to be a tutorial video showing you how to make a wicker basket dome so you can use it for your animals at some point and this specific habitat is also on the workshop. So let's get to the speed build. So to start off this build as well, I basically used um, the sort of the Asia brick wall and made like a circle and then just covered the edge of that circle keeping it all in one group um, so that I could then create this kind of circle effect now it didn't line up properly so it took a bit of trial and error um, and I had to kind of just get it so that it would be sort of dead center I'm not quite sure why it wouldn't do this properly but for some reason it just wouldn't so I sort of had to line it up by eye and then just use the angle snap to create this kind of circle shape and then once I'd created that shape, I just simply rotated the whole thing because then it was sort of lining up properly. I think it's to do with the angles of the roots. Um, obviously when you're doing this, you are making a piece that is absolutely massive and is going to have a lot, like easily over a thousand pieces for a small sphere like this. I did the bigger one, which I'll be using for the tutorial. And essentially it's going to make something that is like over a thousand pieces. So I decided what I would do is I well first of all I needed to make sure that you know the inside was like sealed as possible because the pandas can't the red pandas can't actually climb this so um, that's quite handy that they can't climb it however um, it wouldn't be like big enough really with the size of the path that was going through it just as a circle so I sort of split it into two kind of lined it up and then just sort of did it by eye um, and then this this kind of you know gave me this sort of two two halves of a circle to work with um, I decided to make them the same halves just because it helped it a lot more um, and I just really like the natural look of this dome to be honest it was just so sort of uh, natural looking and it just it's just got that really kind of unusual aesthetic I think um, I was having a bit of issue trying to get this where I wanted it to be um, as you can see I'm just sort of literally flickering it about on the screen um, once I get it in place though, that's kind of the main bit done and um, the rest of it now is just, you know, continuing it on and doing all the decorations and things. So I put the gate there and the idea of this is that I can then just delete bits of it and it is a bit time consuming and then I just sort of lined it up and did it like so and moved it over a bit. I decided it was a little bit too far apart, um, kind of also quite difficult to fill in those gaps as well. Um, this is me just filling in the rest of the habitat so to make sure it's all in encased in it obviously you can get this in the link below from the team workshop please do check that out um but yeah so this this was kind of you know the sort of start of this habitat um i wanted them to be sort of looking in and looking down kind of into the habitat as well so the pandas would be at eye level um i also wanted the pandas to be able to like be seen walking across like climbing frames and things like that um, I feel like maybe if this were a real zoo, this would perhaps have a gate on it so that the guests can walk through the habitat with unscathed. Um, obviously if it were in real life, the pandas would just jump. Um, I have no doubt that they would jump down. Um, so yeah, I do apologise that Alphabet Zoo is not very uh, wheelchair accessible um, or even pram accessible at this point. Um, I, again it just wasn't really something I took into consideration when I was building the zoo and also it's very very hilly as well um, some bits you know I have been trying to think about like the, the later bits in the zoo like how accessible would these be but again I'm not really going for realism here I may take it more into account with uh, future zoos that I'm building but for now it's just unfortunate that that's just how this is um, this is a complete fantasy zoo it's not really based on realism anyway um, so yeah, I don't really know what else to say about that. Um, but yeah, so I was having a bit of issue with the pathing. I wanted to have it raised up so that, as I said, that 
you would be at eye height with the pandas as they were climbing. Um, the idea was that this, this habitat would be just split in two and they would just simply move across to get to different bits. So obviously the best way of doing that when you're having a habitat that's kind of split in two is just to have um, like food items where the keeper can access them and then the other enrichment items like on the other side to encourage the pandas to climb across. Yeah, so in this habitat we have a lot of items on one side and then the food items where the gate side is just so the keepers can feed the animals and it does encourage them to climb over um, and that's one of the coolest bits about this habitat is that the pandas they've got a, a nice tunnel to climb through and they also have the little bridge which you'll see me build in a bit so currently I'm so sorry that it has paused quite a bit um, it should get moving soon I think if it's going to um, I think I must have just left it on pause accidentally for a period of time. Um, but yeah, and then we start just patching in all the holes with bits more branches. With this I'm just selecting bits from the group and we will just see how it goes. Um, and then I just, again, a lot of this I didn't really plan. I just sort of made it and just thought I'd just see how how it would look. And I was really pleased with it. I was really pleased with it. Um, so now I had the issue of making sure that um, the pandas couldn't escape as well so I had to fill in all the holes and then I just took the bridge from my mandrel habitat because I'd already built it once so why am I building it again? Um, I believe I did cut out here, I think I lost some video footage because my computer's a bit janky. Um, I lost a little bit of video footage of me building the tunnel, uh, mainly because it was very very fiddly um, so I do apologise for that but it is mostly just this kind of the bridge now that we're putting in and then connecting it all over. So again you've got to make sure that the animals can climb across there was a point where the ro it was like on a rock and it, they couldn't climb across um, also here I put in some um, the new world glass fences to get in the way and I also put in the um, like the, the Asia brick wall that's the word I'm looking for so obviously we've got this really big heavy log. Now technically the weight of this log would stop it from moving because if it's made out of proper wood it ain't going to be moving. It's going to be really really heavy. Um, so these chains are kind of just there just to help make sure it doesn't move so much. Um, which is why I went for the big jankier chains as opposed to rope because this is a big chunky piece of wood. It's going to be heavy. I don't want it falling on my guests and crushing them if the panda walks through it. I don't want it damaging the pandas. So these chains um, are purely there just to make sure that you know they are connected to the branches, that this, this log which is kind of um, balancing on the glass below is not going to roll, it's not going to smash the glass, the pandas are going to be safe, they're all going to be safe. So that's why the chains are in there, just a little bit of realism. Um, and now we actually get the red pandas inside the habitat now. So again, I start putting some rocks and things in. That turns out the pandas could not jump onto the rocks, but they could jump down from the rocks. So I had to get rid of them at a later date and move things around. And a lot of it again was just adding like branches and plants and things inside here. I do go and add some wisteria at some point um, to the inside of the habitat. Though I don't know if that's what I'm recording because. Again, I think this was on a week where I was struggling a little bit to, to get stuff done. Um, but essentially, yeah, the outside of the habitat is covered with like the crowberry bushes and all the little green things. I had to make sure that things weren't going through the roof because I wanted it to be like a contained habitat. And then the wisteria and plants and things could go through. Um, the pandas do seem to like this habitat. They do seem to move around in it a lot, which is good. They're not just sitting in one place. They are actually using it all. And it's just a nice little habitat, I think, for your zoo. Um, I think it'll just, you know, add something a bit different, um, particularly if you're going for that kind of all-natural theme. And again, we, we sort of have like a jungly kind of exotic theme anyway going on with Alphabet Zoo. So, I mean, it's a bit all over the place anyway, but it is, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, yeah. Now I'm just putting in the enrichment items, as you can see. We've got some herb scent markers on one side. We've got some... Uh, rocks just to break break it up a bit. We've also got some bamboo because they like bamboo and some ferns going in and some caribou moss. We've got a bit of everything. Um, the caribou moss I think was also used on the outside. These were the bushes I was talking about for the outside. Um, I don't think you'll see me recording most of that just because I kind of did that in my spare time um, in between doing other things. Um, 
so yeah I, I, it's a very nice habitat and they really really like it i don't really know what else to say about it i mean it's sort of very self-explanatory i think like you know it's fun to build quite small habitats for red pandas and things like that as well just because it adds a bit of variety um like we've got all these big habitats we've got like you know the elephants directly opposite this why not have something slightly smaller and there was just enough space for me to fit that in there and i was really happy i was able to fit it in because i was worried i wouldn't be able to and it doesn't bother me that it's sort of you know a bit bumpy the floor but you know that's just how it is anyway let's get to the cinematics now and i will see you in the next one take care guys <laughs>